understand, Mr. Speaker, and I have to put this uh, straight, that the deputy president is on record saying that he is a product of the drama festival. He has acted on stage in plays, even at the University of Nairobi, Mr. Speaker. So if he decides to put up a play, it is not the place of the whip to call him out on, on, on putting up a PR show, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Deputy President is very serious about supporting the talents in this country. Only a few days ago, Mr. Speaker, the oh. Deputy President was there for the launch of the Bahati show, Mr. Speaker. We might have had a continuation of the same show on the side, uh, on, on, the, on the runway of uh, at, at JKI, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I was seeking to find out if the whip is in order to take a mickey at very serious professions. The profession of PR uh, and, and, and public relations, the profession of actors, and even the people who chase clout for content, Mr. Speaker, for TikTok, are also doing a serious job, Mr. Speaker. So the, the, I, I would want you to find the, the whip out of order totally, Mr. Speaker, for order. deviating from the issues as you directed. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Okay. It's really a matter of national importance because we are dealing with the offices of the president and the deputy president. The presidency. Office of the presidency is saying, Anjala, the MP for Budalangi. Mr. Speaker, yesterday, I watched in the social media the deputy president carrying a bag in the streets of Jomo Kenyatta. What struck me, Mr. Speaker, in that episode, as somebody who has traveled a lot, is the kind of bag the deputy president was carrying. That one really struck me. That kind of bag is not for the deputy president. That bag is for something else. Another thing that struck me in that episode is what was the content of that bag? Because the deputy president could not even give it to his bodyguard. He had to hold it himself in person, Mr. Speaker. What, what could have contained in that bag, Mr. Speaker? I don't know whether a committee of this parliament can get to know for us. What is the content of that bag that you cannot even trust with Ngunjiri Wambugos behind him that he held for me this bag, Mr. Speaker? I don't know whether <laughs> Mr. Mr. Speaker, those are the two things that struck me in yesterday's episode, political. But having said that, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, why are we discussing this matter here? The only place that can hold the presidency accountable is parliament, Mr. Speaker. They are held accountable here, constitutionally. You know, Mr. Speaker, you can hold somebody accountable in the sense that if it is your responsibility to dismiss him from the job he has, then you are the only one who can hold him accountable. It is a pro clear provision in the Constitution that this is the House that can remove anybody who occupies those offices, Mr. Speaker, and you are a senior lawyer. Mr. Speaker, if what I am seeing or this trend I am seeing continues, you know very well, Mr. Speaker, the Constitution says a lead, a state officer, must, must bring honor, dignity, and respect to the office he's holding, Mr. Speaker. You cannot demean the office you are holding and you expect to attract dignity and respect, Mr. Speaker. Let's call a spade a spade. If you want to politic, that is fine. If you want to go and talk in a church, in a public burial place, that is fine. But not to the extent of demeaning the office of, of the deputy president. Even the office of member of parliament cannot be demeaned, Mr. Speaker. When some of our colleagues misbehave, we take offense. When some of our colleagues here go to burials and behave in a manner that is unbecoming, a manner that a member of parliament should not behave, we take offense. We say, no, we talk to them, don't behave that way. As a whip, I guide them in my office. You can't behave like this. I don't know whether the executive has a whip. The whip of the executive now must come in. I don't know whether it is the majority leader who is the, who is the whip of the executive. But a majority leader, if somebody is not interested in any job, there are Kenyans who are interested in that job, man. why don't you do something? We are here to execute it. There are many Kenyans who can perform. Men and women. And many Kenyans, men and women of high standard and caliber, including, no, I don't qualify because I'm not from Kenya Kwanza. But anybody else is qualified. Mr. Speaker, you know, Mr. Speaker, they are, the deputy presidency is a very, very critical office. In our neighboring country, 
The president today who's running that country was a deputy president. She was a deputy president of President Makovuli. And today she's a president of the Republic of Tanzania. So that tells you how important that office. That is not the kind of office that can be occupied by somebody who's pulling a trolley in the, in the corridors of Jomo Kenyatta Airport. It's not possible. So Mr. Speaker, why we are talking as a parliament, because it is here that we discuss matters of concern to the people. And surely, Deputy President pulling a trolley is of matters of concern to the public. It, the, the discussion here is, why did he use uh, the Kenya Airways, the public transport? That is neither here nor there. The issue is pulling a trolley. The issue here is, are we as a country having the presidency, uh, giving the presidency the kind of respect that it deserves, Mr. Speaker? And I'm not absolving blame from anybody. Anybody who has not done his work, he can be held accountable. But Mr. Speaker, let me conclude by saying this. Mr. Speaker, people take these offices casually. And somebody thinks that if I become a deputy president, I cannot be held accountable by anybody. A member of parliament will hold you accountable. And the constitution has given him that provision to hold you accountable. Any member of parliament, by the way, it doesn't matter whether you're Kenya Kwanza or Azimio, any member of parliament can hold you accountable for actions and anything that you speak. I don't want to digress because the speaker has told, let's concentrate on the context. But some of the utterances even are wanting. So Mr. Speaker, personally as a member of parliament, and you know some of us, we might not have become deputy presidents, or we may not become uh, occupied high offices, but now we are senior members of the, of the country because some of those people, we have served more terms of parliament than them. They know that. I have been in this parliament more than uh, those people. They know themselves. I don't want to mention names. I am now serving the third term, and people came here one term, and Suji, you are in the wapi, Kabulika, Awa, Sasa, Yawa, and Namneyo, the sis, but it's my back to come a cuckoo, up and then you So, Mr. Speaker, I want, to, uh, I want to say this, that uh, let us respect the offices we are holding. If you have grievances, pro, pro, deal with your grievances in a manner that befits the office you are holding, and don't bring shame to the country. Don't bring shame to our country. And when you want to divide the country and you want to separate people, nobody will accept that. Nobody will allow that. With those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I want to say, please, please, for those people who are very close friends of our friend, please buy him another bag. That bag cannot go on. If next trip, I want to see a better bag. KJ, please, thank you very much. Majority Leader, uh, you've heard the concerns of members. Wangela, what is it? <laughs>